Welcome one and all to the beginning of my Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster project, where I ask such daring questions as, why remake Final Fantasy like this? What is the idea behind the changes made in the remakes? Why did they include the auto battle and mini map button into Final Fantasy 1? And most importantly of all, what is there to say about Final Fantasy? As one action button man once said in a notable review of Pac-Man, doing a review of Pac-Man is the- I'm not gonna do- I'm not gonna do his voice. Uh, doing a review of Pac-Man is the video game equivalent of doing your taxes, and while I don't take umbrage with the sentiment, I do feel that in many ways, while Final Fantasy may not be the taxes of video game reviews, it's certainly the taxes of RPG video game reviews. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, well, okay, that's largely what we're gonna unpack in this video and sort of in this project as a whole, so, um, let's get to it. The initial problem with unpacking Final Fantasy the first is that there is an unspoken conversation about this entire era of video games. It was released initially in 1987, which is, if you're keeping track at home, before I was alive, which is pretty fucked up, and in that era, like, video games weren't really talked about in the way that we talk about video games now. Obviously, sure, but there's this, like, perception that video games weren't even really thought about in the way that people making video games think about them now. This isn't strictly true, from what I can tell, as Final Fantasy wasn't literally the first video game that facilitated a lot of how you progress through it with text. Like, the, the text-based adventure was already a thing at that time, right? Like, um, I don't know, like, Ultima 1 had been out by then, right? But the construction of the text in Final Fantasy feels mostly mechanical. What am I talking about? Um, so, let's start simple. There's no character to the party in Final Fantasy Uno because, or besides the character you build for them in your head, which is fine and cool, but obviously the game can't read your disgusting, weird thoughts and broadcast them into the NPCs, so your characters aren't characters functionally in the world, where other titles will try and adjust and complicate that on and on until we really quite distinctly have games about party characters. This isn't the time. <laughs> As such, a lot of the dialogue functions primarily as pieces of a series of puzzles that you have to fit together to learn where and how to progress. We need a canoe to figure out how to cross a river, right? So you talk to some NPCs until one of them mentions that canoes can cross rivers and that someone has a canoe and then you can find a guy that has a canoe and bing bing boom, you're in a canoe town and you can forge ahead. NPCs aren't always so goal-oriented, like some will give you clues about some spicy secrets, like secret magic shops, or a secret powerful sword, or whatever, but by and large, the game's focus isn't on the things like deep thematic meaning, like character building, and the like. Like, it could be, like, sort of working on the world building, maybe? But even then, that's a bit of a stretch. Like, this is all to say that I'm really at a loss here, like, you know, as, as the cat girl on the internet that once talked about how I don't know, Final Fantasy XIII is a religious allegory, and, and how Final Fantasy XIV uses sleep motifs in storytelling. You know, I'm the pretentious art weirdo, so, um... So Final Fantasy. Like, the thing about it, of course, is that there's always something you can look at and think about. Like, you can look at Mario and think about class warfare if you really want, and here, um... Well, okay, so the plot is mildly interesting when the game, like, reports it to us after the fact, right? Like, Garland's entire efforts to stop time, um, include, like, creating an infinite time loop, and I don't know, that's pretty neat, and it hits the right beats of true heroism, where, like, breaking the cycle means that the world never has to give rise to your party of crystal bearers, which is, I don't know, fine. Like, it has the same kind of feel of, like, Dungeons and Dragons, right? The character of your party gets to be yours, and the towns you visit are designed like a GM would design towns, as places where you can extract useful information for treasures or the way forward. Hell, the MP system is pretty straightforwardly modeled after the old casting system in early, and maybe still present? D D I haven't touched D&D in ages. And that, um... If there's something that endures in Final Fantasy, like something that carries it beyond the fact that it's the first of the series, it's it's probably this, right? Like, it's very easy to write off why people like this game, be it nostalgia, purism, whatever, but there is something oddly compelling in it. 
I've beaten Final Fantasy a lot, which is a weird flex to have, but I, I have it, I guess. And every time there's something that happens with the party, at once faceless, nameless, save the names you give them, the, the game's mechanics, for, for example, include just enough like enemies capable of dealing instant death so that inevitably, at some point, the experience gets unbalanced through your party, and the more you play from there, I don't know, they start to take their own lives, their own little narratives. The fact that the game just does not give your characters a personal connection to the world, that you're not intertwined into the narrative, you're given permission to explore the game in a way that's kind of pure, right? And while we're going to go on and talk about the remaster in a bit, I will say that in all versions of this game I've played, which is three of them, um, that spirit has endured, and that's honestly not something that I think any re-release of this title could fully undo. You know, the absence of a tighter, more robust narrative arc full of you know, dynamic, incorporated characters will, at least in this case, pretty much always lead to the player filling in the blanks. You know, pick names for your characters that are meaningful to you, all, all of that. I think that more than anything else, any mechanic or, or image or concept, that is what keeps Final Fantasy 1 alive. Like, there are titles with more iconic black mages, more iconic dungeons, more iconic stories, characters, all of it, but there's never really going to be a Final Fantasy quite so open and easygoing as this one. And in the absence of whatever strange aesthetic Square Enix has pushed the series into, this helps feel the game this helps feel the game. <laughs> this helps the game feel timeless in a way, and that's fantastic. Are there other examples I can bring into this? Um, not really. Like, I mean, that's sort of the point, which which wraps us all back to the original struggle with unpacking this weird part of video game history. Uh, you know, short of me marathon, marathon blitzing Dragon Quest, a game I've never played and hadn't cared to. Um, we should be done here, but. Uh, so, this project is taking on two really weird roles here. I, I want to talk about the games on their own merits, what they look at, reflect on, what questions they pose, all that good stuff, but I have this burning, seemingly unanswerable question lingering over my head. Why did they remaster these games in these ways? Like, the pixel art of the characters feel like they could be ripped from the NES, right? But that's more or less where the similarities stop. Uh, overall, the game's remaster feels like a weird marriage of the Dawn of Souls edition with the NES character sprites, more than a straight-up remaster of the original NES. The original had, much, had a much more limited palette, for one, and, and more than that, there are small mechanical conveniences to the game now that flat-out didn't exist in the original. The original had personal inventories for everyone in the party. I I think the menu in FF1 is so weird. But it also made every attack you select commit to that one target and nothing else, unless you're multi-targeting, but shh. If you want to swing your sword at a goblin at a goblin? At a goblin that just died earlier in the turn, then you swung at air because the goblin's not there anymore. But the Pixel Remaster does away with all these old things, save the old MP system, presumably and it, like it presumably fixes a lot more than just like the broken spells and, and provides us with um, the holy grail of infinite convenience. The Q button. It's the auto battle mini map button, but I played this on the keyboard, so it's the Q button. Now, a convenience like this is by no means unprecedented. There have been tons of remakes of old boomer games. Gen X games? They'd be Gen X. Like, time, time is weird. When they've added, like, some optional convenient functions to the game, like the Shadow Dragon Rewind feature, but okay. So, the auto battle functionally was kind of incredible to behold. Final Fantasy's difficulty largely stems from attrition, which is fine enough, and plenty of games use attrition as a way to impose challenges on you, and Final Fantasy 1 predictably set the tone for it, where every dungeon's loop is an assessment of your resources, your HP, your MP, your items, and how long they can keep you alive, presumably enough to like get to and defeat the boss you're venturing towards, and in some cases, get back out. This difficulty tends to be pretty front-loaded in Final Fantasy 1, at least until you get to the healing staff, you know, and class promotions and generally bulking up enough that you can endure a lot more punishment. Um, now, the system still works in the older versions of this game because you still had to physically go into your inventory and select and use the healing staff every time you wanted to use it, which gave you plenty of time to reassess if you really wanted to do that at this turn, or if you wanted to uh, maybe swap to your Thor's hammer or something else, right? 
The out of battle function ruins the player's capacity to ponder and reflect on every move they make, because you can pretty much just preset your white mage to use the healing staff every turn without thinking. But battles are just mashing the Q button at the start until you get to the boss, where there's basically one dominant strategy for every enemy, which is uh, buff your physical damage dealers, heal with your healer, melt enemies HP, rinse and repeat. Again, nothing in itself is uh, not in itself a bad thing, and, and no one's forcing you to use the auto battle feature, of course. However, I'd argue that the, sh the, the mere fact that it's there, a constant presence on your screen, you're constantly fighting the internal dialogue that instead of menuing your way through every random encounter, you could always just press that Q button. More than that, the minimap feature is, while not as egregious or hostile as auto battle, also a bit of, um, dare, dare I say a pitfall? Like, you can, you can open a fully detailed map of every floor of every dungeon in the game, which is fine, helpful, kind of obviously, but it shows you everything, where to maybe go for treasure, where dead ends are, all of this continues to streamline and smooth out the rougher edges in the original game that kind of defined it. And this kind of brings us to a fascinating little thought experiment, and one that I'm not really sure I can answer in full until maybe this project is over. But, okay, what design choices need to be preserved to maintain the heart of a remastered property? Final Fantasy, as we've discussed at length, is a, is at a massive deficit on plot, characters, all of that, because it wants to develop the feeling of adventure in your own head, D&D style, we got that, but if these features are siphoning out what makes up most of the thrust of dungeon exploring, like thinking your way through random encounters, exploring places you don't know, if it's changing so many things that shift the balance of power to the player this much, what effectively has been remade here. And an even weirder question to contend with is why do they do this? And, and, and I'm being serious here, it's really easy to be kind of callous about this question, to lean into cynicism and say that Square Enix doesn't care about the purity of the original game and is just trying to put non-functional scanline filters over their little sprite game to help blind us and lure us into making a hefty purchase for the whole set because, hmm, you gotta have the whole set, but I, I don't know if I really buy that. Like. For starters, the music in the game got, and I can't show you it because it, it's, it's in, it, I can't show you it, but trust me, it's a complete rearrangement. Every song in the original title, even though they've been arranged and rearranged so, so many times, got a really lovely fresh coat of paint, and, and it's just beautiful to listen to. The, the special effects overlaid on the pixel art for water, magic, all of that, were, while it can be kind of a mixed bag in some places, that, that can't have been easy. They wanted something in this project. And that's what I want to dig into. I I'm not sure what they wanted in this game, like what they sought to repackage to us, but I have a suspicion that the compromises made here exist in order to make these six titles consistent with each other. So I wonder, if that's the case, what sacrifices were made on the latter half of this collection that facilitated decisions like these? Because, and this is a bit of a spoiler here, I'm sorry, but, um, Upon the release of the Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster, they took down the admittedly hideous iOS version from Steam. Whatever they wanted to do with these games, they wanted them to feel like the definitive remaster of the series, you know, deleting some expanded content clear out of our capacity to buy them. So if you'll all indulge me in a bit of a cliffhanger tonight, this will be an ongoing process as we go through the rest of the series. I, I can't really answer what the remasters wanted out of one part of the series, obviously, so, so the rest has to come later. This all isn't to say that the pixel remasters are bad or anything like that, as much as they can be hard to really understand in a game that's already really hard to talk about. If the spirit of Final Fantasy 1 exists undeniably. The vibes, the mood, the feeling of it is all still there, but there's something odd. It's something kind of lacking in the game's remake that feels like they're trying to quietly scrub the flawed beauty of this game from history. Maybe I really am getting cynical. Like, okay, actually, I'm, I'm just gonna put an aside here. Um, it's currently December 31st, 3.11 in the morning. I've been working on editing this thing. I've had to convert so much footage, and then I found out that my audio quality is so garbage that I've I've been compelled to re-record this. 
I am so tired. That being said, <clears throat> special thanks to Ark Coon, Brandon Haney, Caitlin Fisher, Kate Rose, Colleen T, Dector A, Evan Kearns, Lewis Wells, Maria Aladren, Alistair V, Narai the Redmarked, Pahor, Professor Bopper, St. Rawberry, Thomas Volpez, and Zetetic. Thank you all so much. I'm gonna go pass out.